In this quick video, I will show you how to install Google Tag Manager on your website. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania's YouTube channel where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. So, you have started using Google Tag Manager. You have created an account, a container. Now what? Now it's time to install it on your website. In some cases, you will be able to achieve that by yourself, but in other situations, you might need to ask for a developer's help. This tutorial is the first lesson in video series where I teach beginners how to get started with Google Tag Manager. So if you missed the first video, I'll post the link below this video. By the way, if you want to learn even more about Google Tag Manager, I have created a free ebook which is called Google Tag Manager for Beginners. So if you want to download that, click the link below this video. All right, so let's learn how to install Google Tag Manager. To install Google Tag Manager on a website, Google is asking you to add two codes to the website. If you want to find those codes, go to your Google Tag Manager interface and click on this container ID. This is the ID of your container and each container has a unique ID. So click on this and you will see two codes. And in this case, Google is requiring you to add this code into the head of the website and this code right after the opening body tag. If you're wondering what does the head and the body mean, every website has two parts, the head and the body. The head is responsible for containing various scripts, settings, meta information, keywords, title, and so on. And body is the place where all the content is stored. For example, images, text, and other elements. So once these two codes are added to the website, here's how things will work. A visitor lands on your website and the browser loads all the content off the page and also all the scripts. Thanks to this script, Google Tag Manager will be launched on your website and then it will activate your tags based on the conditions that you have configured in your Google Tag Manager container. Usually the task of adding these two codes is handled by the developers. So if you have them, you should forward these two codes to your developer. If you are handling the development of the website by yourself and you don't have a developer, then let's take a look how you should add these two codes to the website. So I have a sample website right here. This is a Shopify. And if I go to the section where I can edit the code of the website, you just need to keep in mind that every website and every content management system is different. So in your case, the place where you will edit the code might be different. So here is the website's code. And as you can see, this is the beginning of the head. And if we scroll down, we will find the end of the head. And then here is the beginning of the body and the end of the body. So according to Google's recommendations, or well, we can call them requirements, you should first copy the first code and then place it somewhere in the head. The higher the better, but it's perfectly fine to place it right before the end of the head. So you can identify the head by seeing this slash. So you can enter it right here. And then the second code should be added immediately after the opening body tag. So the opening body tag is just the sign and then body without a slash. So you can add it right here. So to sum up, we have two codes. One is the code that is surrounded by script tags and we added that code right before the closing head tag. And then after the opening body tag, we added the second code. So now you can save it. And the easiest way to check whether that code is actually properly added is to go to Google Tag Manager, enable the preview mode, then the orange banner will appear. This is very important. If you don't see the orange banner, uh, I will post the link below the video to a blog post uh, where you can find reasons why this doesn't work. So it is super important that you see this orange banner. And then if we go to the front end of the website as a visitor, if we see a preview mode right here, this means that you have installed Google Tag Manager correctly. If you want to install Google Tag Manager on a WordPress website, I highly recommend that you use Google Tag Manager for WordPress plugin. I will post the link to this plugin below the video. So if you have permissions, you can install this plugin onto your website. If you don't, then ask your developers. And once you install the plugin, you will find it under settings and then Google Tag Manager. Click it 
and then in the Google Tag Manager ID field, you should paste the ID of your Google Tag Manager container, which you can find right here. You can copy it, paste it right here, and then make sure that there are no empty spaces in front of the container ID like this. Then you need to choose the placement of the second Google Tag Manager container code snippet. And where do you want to place it? You can place it in the footer, you can have a custom placement, and then you can choose the codeless injection. Now, this one is the most convenient. However, there is a slight chance that it will break your website's front end. So if you want, you can choose a codeless injection, press save changes, then go to your website and check whether everything looks fine. And if some parts look a bit unusual, maybe some elements on the page are missing, then you can quickly switch back to custom, save changes, and all of the problems will go away and uh, you will continue having a proper front end of your website. However, from my experience, usually codeless injection works just fine. So you can definitely try with this one. And if it doesn't work, you can go with custom or you can go with footer. However, if you choose this option, you will not be able to verify your Google Search Console ownership with Google Tag Manager. But if you don't care about that, it's fine to choose the footer option as well. But as I've mentioned, I usually choose the codeless injection. So choose this option, enter your GTM container and click save changes. And from this moment, Google Tag Manager will be installed on your website. And that's how you install Google Tag Manager on your website. Remember, the installation method depends on the content management system that you are using. Some popular platforms have already built in functionality that supports Google Tag Manager or maybe they have some plugins that can install Google Tag Manager for you. But if you are working with some custom platform, then you will need to ask a developer to add Google Tag Manager code snippet to your website source code. Also, if you want to learn some additional details about Google Tag Manager, I have a free ebook, which is called Google Tag Manager for Beginners. And you will find the link to that ebook below the video. Click the link, download and enjoy. If you found this lesson useful, hit thumbs up below this video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to get more Google Tag Manager tutorials in the future, consider subscribing. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.